Today on the channel, I'm here to remind you to play authentic. I'm just kidding. Today we're going to learn how to play You Really Got Me by Van Halen. <laughs> Alright everybody, welcome back. Today we're going to learn how to play You Really Got Me by Van Halen. This song uh, is, is a pretty easy song rhythmically to play, but don't let that fool you. There's a lot of really, really cool Van Halen nuances and tricks in this song that Eddie does that, that brings uh, a lot of magic and excitement to this uh, particular recording. So I'm going to go over uh, the ones that speak to me the most and that I feel are really good and relevant to, to bring out in a lesson format. Not to mention the guitar solo. The guitar solo in this song is absolutely insane. It's like a fire breathing dragon and some of the bends that Eddie pulls off in this guitar solo um, are tremendous and, and very cool. So let's get started. First of all, Eddie's tuned to E flat. Uh, well, close to E flat. He's kind of in between E flat and standard closer to E-flat than he is standard. I'm not sure why Eddie tuned this way. Folklore says he thought it sounded the best. I personally think Eddie just had, I think he had a, a funky tuner. Either that or they slowed the recordings down a little bit in, uh, in the final mix so Roth could sing to him. But who knows? Uh, we could speculate for hours and we're here to learn guitar, not talk about Eddie's tuning. So. The opening riff for You Really Got Me, which is a Kinks song, which you probably already know that, goes like this. So first and foremost, Eddie's got a very heavily distorted sound on his amp, the, the legendary brown sound, right? Which is a lot of mids, the highs are rolled back a little bit and it's fat. Uh, great, great tone. So try to get that type of a tone. And this riff employs a lot of scrapes, like a, a lot of rakes and scrapes by holding your hand on the fretboard and not playing a note. And in between these, we're doing these scrapes. That riff is a G kind of like how Heartbreaker by Led Zeppelin starts off and we're gonna bend it up slightly and play an A like that so it goes and then go which is a downstroke and an upstroke and we're, we're just laying our hands across the strings to give it this muted sound You've got to dig into that G immediately after you do the scrape. So you go. That's how quickly it goes back into the riff. And then Mikey comes in and Eddie may go. And then once the song kicks in with the drums, Eddie doesn't go so quick anymore. He goes. So he's just gonna, he's kind of got that going on between each chord pattern. Okay, so then uh, you also hear Eddie do these pinch harmonics, which go. So what we're doing there, a pinch harmonic is when you take your thumb and we're picking with just the very tip of the pick like this, right? And the thumb, the thumb is on the edge of the pick so your string winds up hitting the pick and then grazing the edge of your thumb and it creates a squeal which is called a pinch harmonic and it sounds like this. You hear it a lot in, you know, in ZZ Top song. And 
and depending on where you hit your pick on the, the between these pickups, um, you can get different feel, uh, settings and feelings. <laughs> And I think in, when Eddie's doing, he's kind of in the middle somewhere. That's what it sounds like to me. And so what I'm doing is I'm on the third fret doing this pinch harmonic lick, and I'm starting on the G string, then I go to the D string, and then I go to the A string, and I'm, I'm pulling up on each one. Like, without doing the pinch harmonics, I'm going to turn down the volume a little bit. So you can hear it, what it sounds like without the pinch harmonics. Kind of like that. And now with the distortion all the way up. So I'm playing the open string after I do the pinch harmonic in the bend. I've seen it um, played a lot of different ways, but that's how I hear it. I, I learn these things by ear, and to me that's what it sounds like. So we're going... Next part goes, we're going A to a B. And then the third set of chords is D to E. rests on that D at the very end so that that part goes for quite a long time and there's certain times during the the certain times during the song he'll go which I'm muting and I'm going kind of sounds to me like he's playing that D like that like that also and then Eddie does these massive pick slides and to get that pick slide sound what you've got to do um, well Eddie used thin picks first of all which um, really adds to the pick slides but you can you chew up a thin pick really really quickly one pick slide on a thin pick and it's toast so maybe Eddie used thin picks in the studio and then discarded them. <laughs> I don't know. So what you do is you take the pick and you angle it and you go. And a lot of times what I do is I hit the E and the A string at the same time. And like that. And you, you can't be wimpy about it. You got to. I mean, you got to have conviction when you go into it. I mean, you don't want to go into it so hard that you're, you know, going to break, <laughs> break your guitar strings or you jack up your guitar or the performance. But you want to really uh, convict, uh, be have a lot of conviction <laughs> when you do your pick slide. And that angle... is really important because the strings have they're wrapped right so that those wraps are um scraping against your pick as it's angled this way and gives it that that kind of a sound so And you got to let it breathe. And, uh, you know, the recording for Van Halen 1 had this huge plate reverb on it that they added after the album was, you know, when it was being mixed. And uh, Eddie and Alex didn't like that, that plate reverb, but 
we've all grown to love it and it sounds lush and awesome because that's what we're used to but I like to have that setting on my guitar so when I'm playing it it sounds like kind of like the record you can hear in that space is really cool when you get that effect Okay, so let's move on to the guitar solo. I'm going to do my best to uh, uh, to show you how this is played uh, in one take here. And uh, it's not dynamically difficult other than the, the bends are very tricky and you've got to have really good ears. Uh, Eddie's bending ability and ability to hit the right notes and put the right type of vibrato on those notes with those bends is a quintessential part of Eddie's sound and that's why his guitar solos sound the way that they do. Truthfully, that's why all great guitar players' guitar solos sound the way that they do because it's the bending and the inflection and the way they approach those notes that really make it unique. And that's what's so hard about replicating Eddie's sound. Um, but you can learn a lot from it. Not that we want to be Eddie clones, but there's a lot to learn from the way that Eddie and other great players approach their playing styles and then you can clearly take that approach and that style and make it your own and find new ways to do it. Or if you just like playing it the way they did it, that's cool too. I mean, heck, there's no rules, right? So he starts off this lick with a Chuck Berry riff, uh, which is cool. So I'm going to play the very first part of the solo for you. It goes... So I messed that up a little bit. That's it right there. So let's take this part and break it down into a slower and more uh, methodical analysis. So the first part of this solo is your standard Chuck Berry lick. What I mean by that is that duck walk. So what Eddie's doing there is he's gonna he's going. We're doing that double stop. So you bend that note up. So it's like a an octave. So that's very critical in this this phrase to get that bend down. That that this note here on the G string on the seventh fret is being bent up to the to that note, which is an E. And we're in the A minor pentatonic shape. We're in the A minor pentatonic shape for the majority of this solo, although it, it switches a little bit, but uh, we'll go over that in a minute. So this Chuck Berry lick. And that's a double stop on the E and the B string on the fifth fret. So you can play it together like, or you can just go. I think it sounds better if you do it to like all the, all the notes together. And then he goes, which is just at the end of that solo. So in very slow motion. Then he does this tapping lick. So think of it this way. Uh, everybody probably knows their A minor pentatonic position. So we're gonna take this B string right there, this, that part of the pentatonic scale. And right there is an A, right? Which is also this note. But we're gonna go. So we're taking that top part of that pentatonic on the B string, and we're gonna descend this down two times. So it's gonna go. Kind of like eruption. And then we're going to go like 
which is an A, it's an A major pentatonic lick. So Eddie liked to mix minor and major because that's a very bluesy thing to do. And you know, Eddie was raised on jazz and blues and he loved Eric Clapton, so that makes total sense. Uh, so at the very end of that lick, we're doing, and then we're gonna switch down to, think, you know that lick that goes, It's one of them. But what he does is he goes, he bends it up a step, and then, and so instead of hitting that note there, he's hitting. He, so he lets off of that note, and this note is still bent. It's bent up, we hit the note, we let go. It's still bent, release, and then let off to the A. So in slow motion. So I'll take that from the beginning. Now here's where it gets hard. If it's already hard for you, well, it's about to get harder. <laughs> All right, so we're gonna we're gonna go up to the A minor pentatonic position up here. We were just here in this in this section down here in safe territory. Now we're gonna be up here. So Eddie goes in the supersonic bend mode here, and most of us. Uh, well, I am anyway. Most of us probably are used to bending stuff one step. What I mean by one step is like we'll go right and do that unison bend. Well, on this part of the solo, after Eddie goes, he goes. <laughs> so he's not going, he's going. which is like, that's like two steps. He does that three times. So we're, we're hitting this top note on the 17th fret, and then we're going on the um, to, uh, 17, 18, 20th fret, and we're bending it up to this. So it's super high. So we do that three times, and then he goes, he bends it, uh, he does like this little, and he bends it normally to up to the A, just one step. And that's how he ends that, <laughs> that lick, so that first part, which is the hard one, and then he goes, which is, um, um, <laughs> so what he's doing there is he's going, which is like going, but we're up here going, it almost sounds like he's going, which would be bending into this note instead of hitting this note. We could go. So I'm gonna I'm gonna say that's what he's doing because it just sounds to me a little bit too loose to be right on that note. So we're we're gonna hit on the um, 19th fret and bend it a half step up to this 20th, and then. One step up on the B string on the 20th fret. So we're, and then we're on the G string on the 17th. One step up and then D string. So I'm gonna take this very slow. Uh, sorry to confuse anybody if this is 
I don't know how else to explain it other than <laughs> the way that I am. <laughs> One more time. And then the last part of that solo, we gotta have our neck pickup turned down. Uh, in this case, he might not have even had a neck pickup, so we're gonna use our toggle switch. And uh, we're gonna go on the G string on the ninth fret and we're gonna bend this ninth fret up to the 12th. So we're gonna take this note and bend it up to this, to this G. So we're gonna go. So when he does that, um, so at the very end of that solo, kind of release that note when I mean release what I'm meaning is we go we bring it back down slowly you know kind of like an airplane coming down for a crash landing and you got to listen to that bend it's got to be it's got to be right there it's almost like Eddie bent this note and he wasn't really sure <laughs> where he was going with it, and he, his ear was like, oh, I'm going to bend it to that dominant seventh, that G. <laughs> All right, so there's the guitar solo. There's one more little lick at the very end of the song that's really, really cool. So at the very end, when they're going, uh, you know, you really got me, you really got me. <laughs> they go he plays the Jimi Hendrix chord and Eddie goes so what that is that's just a standard E minor lick he goes up in, we're on the E minor pentatonic scale now because we just ended on an E. The song's an A, but you know Van Halen, they ended it on an E because they're at the very end of that chorus. So E minor pentatonic. A little bit of a Clapton lick there. And then Eddie goes... So if you don't know that lick already, that's one you got to learn. It's all over the place in rock and roll and all over Van Halen songs. So we're, we're on the high E string on the 12th fret, then the B string on the 15th. And we put a little vibrato on it so it'll sound like it's on pitch. And then he goes... So that lick is basically a pull-off. We have our pointer finger on the B string on the 12th fret. Like that, and if, when you get good at this, you can be like, watch this hand, I'm only picking once and I'm doing all these pull-ups. You gotta get really good at doing those hammer-on pull-offs. So. so what we did there was, after we go, he does it like three times, something like that. It's not important. I mean, if you're going to be playing this live, you know, just <laughs> play, play this lick similar to this. This is, you know, I don't think Eddie played it the same way uh, exactly every single time, so it's, it's not that important. It's the feel that you got to get. So what I did there was that I would go down to the G string and I do this hammer on. I'm on the 11th and 12th. And then I hammer on with my pinky on the 14th fret on the D string. 
Actually, it's not a hammer on, I'm doing a down pick. And I, I go back up to this 11th fret. So that's what it is. So we're going. And then 12, 14 on the D. And then we replicate that lick we just did on the G string, but we're on the D string. So. And then we go. So one more time. One more time. It's very hard for me to play that slowly and get the get the way that it, it it's played. That last part's a slide. I'm not picking it. Then I think he accents those notes. He kind of puts little stingers on them, chops into them. All right, so there you go. You really got me. I hope this lesson was informative, helpful, and you could follow along. If you like the content, please consider subscribing, comment below, hit the notification bell, and most importantly, have a great day. Peace out. <laughs>